Welcome to Measuring External Static Pressure. This video will be used in the Comfort Cooling Simulator that will be released in the spring of 2023. Please visit our website at HVACSimulator.com or our Facebook or our LinkedIn page for current products. External static pressure is defined as the amount of work the blower must perform to overcome the pressure drops of the system. External static pressure is shown on the top of this chart, and then the blower speed taps are on the left, and in the body are the CFM values. This blower performs data. The external static pressures are listed on the left column, and then on the top row are the blower speeds, but the CFM are in the field, in the body of the chart. This manufacturer has the external static pressure on top, but they use dip switches to set the CFM, and then in the body are the CFM values. Here's a graphical representation of a blower performance data used on the air handler. External static pressure is on the vertical, and then the CFM is on the horizontal. This manufacturer has external static pressure on the top, but there are 18 blower speeds, and then in the body of the chart, are the CFM values. P1 is negative pressure in the blower compartment and P2 is positive pressure below the coil. The recommended place to drill the, a hole in the furnace is within the top three quarter inches of the furnace. The heat exchanger is below so no damage will be done to the heat exchanger. A two ton AC will be used for this example. The steps to selecting cooling CFM. The industry standard is 350 to 400 CFM per ton. Step one is to determine the size of the equipment. This example is a two ton AC, therefore the CFM will be between 700 and 800 CFM. View the blower performance data and select an arbitrary external static pressure. The recommended starting value is 0.6 inches of water column. Select the speed tap between 700 and 800 CFM or the closest to the max value. Measure the external static pressure. Then reference the blower performance data and confirm airflow based on the actual external static pressure. Make necessary speed adjustments based on the external static pressure. Next example, we will use a 40,000 BTU furnace with a two and a half ton drive. With a two ton air conditioner, the value for the CFM is between 700 and 800 CFM. Arbitrarily choose 0 0.6. The value 655 is below 700, so the blue speed tap would not be a good choice. The black speed tap is 850 CFM, so this would not be a good choice since it's above 800 CFM. Therefore, a good starting point is the yellow speed tap at 740 CFM. Then measure the actual external static pressure. Reference the blower performance data to see where the actual falls in. If the actual, in this example, were to be 0 0.7 inches of water column, then a judgment call needs to be made by a technician. 695 CFM, is that a good value? It's a little below 700, but the technician may choose 795, which would be the black speed tap. Selecting CFM for heating. In this example, a 40,000 BTU furnace will be used. Begin by using the sensible heat equation. The sensible heat is much larger than the latent heat, so this formula is a good starting point. BTU output is equal to 1.08 times CFM times delta T. There's a few items that are needed to use this formula, which can be pulled from the data nameplate of the furnace. The efficiency rating of the furnace, the BTU rating of the furnace, and the manufacturer's temperature rise and always use the mid value. The mid value between 40 and 70 degrees is 55. Calculate the BTU output by multiplying the BTUs by the efficiency. 0.95% times 40,000 is 38,000 BTUs. 
substitute into the sensible heat equation and solve, which is 639.7. On the calculator, it's 38,000. Divide that by 1.08, and then divide that by 55. Just like cooling, there are steps to selecting heating CFM. The first step is to determine the CFM for the size of the equipment using the sensible heat equation, 639 CFM, or a 40,000 BTU. View the blower performance data and select an arbitrary ESP. The recommended starting value is 0.6 inches of water column. Select the speed tap closest to the calculated CFM. Measure the external static pressure. Reference the blower performance data and confirm airflow based on actual external static pressure. Make necessary adjustments based on external static pressure. Next example, we'll use a 40,000 BTU furnace. The calculated value was 639 CFM. Therefore, 655 is the closest value. Measure the actual external static pressure, and then make the necessary adjustments. If the actual external static pressure was 0.5 inches of water column, then a technician would have to make a judgment call, whether to leave it on the blue speed tap or to use the red speed tap. 625 CFM is close to 639 CFM. Either one would be a good choice. This chart represents multiple BTU inputs of furnaces with the calculated CFM. These values may not be correct for every furnace. Calculate CFM using the manufacturer's efficiency and their temperature rise. On the top chart, there are 18 blower speeds with approximately 900 CFM between the lowest and the highest speeds. On the bottom chart, there's 255 CFM from the lowest to the highest speed. This is going to get critical setting up these speeds to make sure that the furnace is running at the peak performance. If we look on the default value for heat on a 40,000 BTUs, the calculated value is 640 CFM. Default value is 475. If this furnace was not set up correctly, there would be a high probability of this furnace tripping on limit switch. With a two-ton cooling system, we would need between 700 and 800 CFM. The default value is 1,040 CFM at 0.6 inches of water column. So the external static pressure needs to be measured. The blower performance data needs to be referenced to set these systems up You are only as good as your knowledge and your tools. Make sure you have the knowledge and the correct tools to measure external static pressure. Thank you for watching.